Well, that's good. That's always nice. How are we doing on the audio now? Is that better? No. Nothing. Monica, nothing from the podium mic. That's what happened last time. Anything from the podium mic? No. Sounds bad. Okay. It is uh, my pleasure to welcome today the Prime Minister of Slovenia on his first visit to the Pentagon. I last saw Prime Minister Donošek during my visit to, uh, to Slovenia in September. It was truly a memorable visit. The beauty of Lake Bled, the heritage of the capital city, Ljubljana, and the spirit of the Slovenian people. The people of Slovenia have built a modern, flourishing nation, a nation that the United States is honored to call a friend. Last year, we advanced the U.S.-Slovenian friendship by setting forth an ambitious agenda to deepen our defense cooperation. Today, the Prime Minister and I are moving ahead on that agenda by signing a general security of military information agreement. This agreement will make it possible for our governments to exchange classified military information. It signals that our security cooperation has reached a higher level of trust and openness. And it certainly is an important step in bringing Slovenia closer to the NATO alliance. Slovenia set an important example as a nation of the former Yugoslavia by choosing from the start to focus on the possibilities of the future rather than on the problems of the past. By choosing the path of political, economic, and military reform, and by seizing the opportunities of the Partnership for Peace. In making these choices, Slovenia has emerged in the forefront of nations that are helping to bring about a Europe united in peace, freedom, and democracy. As a nation at the heart of the continent, at the gateway between East and West, Slovenia's success is crucial to achieving this New York. Now I would like to invite America's friend and Slovenia's leader, Prime Minister Dinošek, to say a few words. Mr. Prime Minister. It's a great pleasure to be here, as Mr. Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Perry, said. We met last September in Slovenia during his visit. I remember his visit as a very interesting one. Very, and today, Mr. Oigor, the Vice President. These are all important steps in developing bilateral relations between Slovenia and the United States. I can state today that our relations are excellent, that they develop 
very well in political. Slovenia is one of the countries that did very good development. The country which is considered very often as the best case among transition countries in Central and Eastern Europe. And we also present our candidate. Uh, last year at the similar ceremony here in Pentagon, I asked you when the Slovenia will become a member of NATO. We are, are we nearer to that goal today? I should first of all note that neither I nor I, the United States makes that determination unilaterally. That is a determination which is made by all 16 of the NATO nations and the candidate members. And indeed, it's, uh, it's a decision which has to be ratified by the parliaments of all of the nations involved. Within NATO, there is a process to consider the new candidate members. And that process is moving along. Since you asked me that question a year ago, yes, the process has moved along uh, on schedule. I expect that at the December meeting of NATO, the foreign ministers, uh, that there will be a decision made to move ahead during the next year, during 1997, with the decision of who and when, who the new NATO members will be and when. So I think we're uh, a matter of months now in those decisions being made. Are you planning to, to discuss with Prime Minister today the selling of American weapons to Slovenia? I will discuss defense cooperation in uh, all of its aspects. I do not have any proposals to make to the Prime Minister relative to U.S. weapons being sold to Slovenia. We Mr. have time for two more questions. Mr. Secretary, um, could we just get your comment on whether you believe that the uh, use of American troops, U.S. military, to uh, perform uh, free labor at the uh, Olympic Games is an appropriate use of the U.S. military, and 